I used to sit on the steps and listen to the Cleveland Indians game. Hit, it's a hit. Out the left field. This one's way out there and gone. Those early memories by the radio inspired Jerry Edwards to pursue sports broadcasting in his home state of Ohio. But then the Lord would get a hold of his life and led him to enroll in the Liberty Bible Institute in 1979. Jerry assumed his days behind the mic were a thing of the past. One of my thoughts was that doing this, I'll never broadcast another game. <laughs> but at the tail end of the 1981 Liberty football season, God would unexpectedly open that door again. Frank Capiello was our play-by-play -play guy, and he was going to miss three games. And so I had to find somebody to take Frank's place. And then somebody told me that uh, there was a guy that worked for Harold Wilmington in the Bible Institute that had done a lot of high school broadcast in Ohio. And Jerry and I met and talked, and Jerry agreed to do the three games that Frank was going to miss. Those three games would turn into 30 years, and Jerry became known as the voice of the flames. Beecher rolls right, stands up close, it's caught. The catch made by Brown down the right sideline, touchdown! He just comes across as so personable. He had the ability to connect with people through his voice. I mean, they, they weren't in the room with him, but they felt like they were in the room. Mantlo has the ball out front, drives by his man, dumps it in left corner to Sarchette, out to Blair for three, yes. Among many memorable moments for Jerry, one stands above the rest. The date was March 18, 1994. And that was the day we stepped onto the court, the NC2A tournament, and that's North Carolina, the number one team in the uh, country at the time. They had a coach that was very familiar, and he's gonna play against us. And we played them very well till the last maybe eight or 10 minutes when we ran out of gas and they still had reserves. But Jerry's contribution as the voice of the Flames went far beyond just the games themselves. We want to be here when you need us. Thousands of Central Virginians began their day listening to him as he hosted the morning show on the campus radio station. No matter how late he had gotten home from the previous night's road game, he was a mainstay at the mic until his retirement in 2014. A retirement that was short-lived. Three days later, they hired me back part-time, and they said it was mainly because of my skill set. And I said, well, that's great. What is my skill set? They said, you're old. And <laughs> you actually knew Jerry Falwell and worked with him and for him. Today, Jerry works as a tour guide in the Jerry Falwell Museum. What you're looking at here is Treasure Island. It's in the middle of the James River, downtown Lynchburg. I get to tell the stories uh, of uh, how this place came about. And since I was here for much of that, I can uh, do it and tell stories to, about Dr. Falwell in the first person. Jerry was honored in 2011 when he was inducted into the Liberty Athletics Hall of Fame. But he'll tell you that his greatest honor has come from his listeners. Had a man after church on a Wednesday night, and he said, who he was, and he said, I can't see. He said, I've been blind for years. He reached out and grabbed my hand. He said, because of you, I've been able to see every game Liberty's played this year. And I've never forgotten that. I realized that those people can't see what I see. It's my job to make sure they see it. Jennings gets a handoff, starts inside, bounces outside. He's in the end zone. It's been a great privilege to be the voice of the Flames.